Hello, and welcome to the new episode of The View Podcast, our podcast series on leaders in retail. I'm Julia Dietmar, the Chief Product Officer at View.ai, and your host for today. The focus of today's episode is omnichannel. Omnichannel has been the industry's favorite buzzword for many years, but what is the definition of omnichannel commerce? Since 73% of consumers shop on more than one channel and 45% of total retail sales, both online and offline, is influenced by activities that customers perform on web and mobile, it is important to understand that omnichannel commerce is the coordination of traditional channels, such as marketing, selling, and fulfillment, and supporting systems to create a seamless and consistent customer experience across the whole enterprise. To help us understand complexities of well-executed omnichannel strategies, I'm very excited to welcome our today's guest, Eileen Rizzo, the Senior Vice President of IT at Ashley Stewart. With 20 plus years experience in retail business processes and systems development, Eileen has directed strategic initiatives for omnichannel merchandising and marketing processes, including loyalty programs, assortment planning, pricing optimization, and analytics. She's played prominent leadership roles at JCPenney, Accenture, and more recently at Macy's, where she led the development, implementation, and support of omnichannel processes and systems in both merchandising and marketing. Hello, Eileen. Welcome. We're very thrilled to have you on the VIEW podcast. Since today's podcast is focused on omnichannel retail, it would be interesting to talk about how brands are approaching omnichannel to improve customer experience. But first, uh, let's talk a little bit about your background. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience and how long have you been in retail? Uh, Sure, Julia. I uh, have been in retail for 20 plus years. I started out after I received my MBA from Babson College um, in retail consulting. I spent several years there, went to work for a retailer, Joan and David, and then went back into retail consulting with Accenture for a few years where I was then recruited um, by my client at the time, J.C. Penney. I spent four years with J.C. Penney, uh, 12 years with Macy's, and I am now um, recently the Senior Vice President of Information Technology for Ashley Stewart. That's awesome. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, your definition of successful omnichannel retail strategy? Yeah, I believe that to be a successful omnichannel retailer, you have to be able to provide the customer what she wants, when and where she wants it. So as a retailer, that means allowing her to order online and pick up in store, order online or deliver to the store for pickup at a later time. Um, To be able to be in store and see sizes and colors or product that isn't necessarily physically in the store, um, but that meets the customer's needs and be able to get that product to her when she wants it. So there's been a lot of talk about omnichannel um, in the last years. It's been a buzzword in the industry for um, pretty much as long as internet has been around. What, in your opinion, are the processes that are involved in building a robust omnichannel system? Well, obviously, it it starts with the customer strategy and um, the capabilities that you're going to provide and enable her with. But any robust solution means ensuring that you really have accurate and real-time inventory availability, that you know what product you have, where you have it um, in the pipeline. So all channels need to access that customer-facing product information, the content, the images, have to understand what your stock status is, whether it's on a desktop device, a mobile device, at your point of sale, um, or mobile selling tools for your associates. Um, And finally, I think you need to have the visibility to where that product is, whether it's on its way to a store, on its way to a distribution center, um, or on its way to a customer. And while systems integration and communication are critical to delivering the experience, I think the experience can really fall short if you don't have clean data, accurate data, um, and understanding a single source of data. I think where I've seen um, omni-channel strategies fail and um, where customers can have really poor experiences um, is when you have um, online data that's different from the data that's being presented in the store, whether it be to the customer or to the sales associate who's trying to assist the customer in finding product. Um, So 
um, there's a lot that goes into the overall process from understanding item and order creation, allocation, the financials it has a big component and impact on an omni-channel um, strategy and system, impact staffing at the right time and in the right place, logistics, um, I, I could go on, but it's, it's truly um, omni-impacting on all systems. So sounds like data is, uh, can be the biggest challenge or the biggest ro roadblock while uh, building these types of complex systems. Uh, have you seen any successes in um, um, with any of your previous uh, clients or uh, in your previous experiences where um, a retailer actually was able to solve the data problems and what were the tactics that they have employed in doing so? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know that I can say that anybody has done it completely um, well. I think everybody is still trying to do it, and that comes from uh, retail businesses, brick and mortar, um, being developed and stood up in different systems and times from e-commerce strategies. And typically, when retailers um, went into both brick and mortar and e-com, they built from an e-com perspective up. And then it's about how you're sewing that information together. Um, Obviously, the pure play online retailers that are venturing into brick and mortar um, may have an advantage if they're leveraging the same systems and the same source of data. Um, so, th so the reverse side, I think, probably has a better approach, a store um, or concept like a Bonobos. Yeah, that makes total sense um, because thinking about how traditionally brick and mortars went um, to online and what type of data they had available, it makes complete sense that suppliers supplying for brick and mortar stores are not required to provide imagery and rich product metadata, whereas uh, for online it's absolutely a requirement and that's why those pure online players have uh, an advantage. Have you seen um, uh, have you seen a successful use cases of omnichannel retail? Anything that specifically stood out in your opinion in in the last uh, couple of years? Yeah, I mean, for me, the Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods and what it's doing now um, in creating brick and mortar presence um, is is pretty big. So, you know, there was those that said, "Well, Amazon's a marketplace; we're we're not going to be a marketplace retailer." And uh, obviously, there is the Amazon effect, which is real. And now that they're getting um, uh, into brick and mortar and they're integrating their Amazon experience for customers in the Whole Foods markets, and they are developing more storefronts. Um, I think it's going to, to really provide increasing pressure on existing retail um, formats to ensure that they are omni-channel and have the right strategy and value proposition to the customer. Yeah, yesterday um, I have uh, experienced for the first time Amazon Go. They oh. just opened a store in San Francisco and I went to check it out and the experience was very frictionless it was as, as, as long as you install the app um it just works you walk in you get what you need you walk out and about two to three hours later i got a receipt that i was charged and it was pretty easy from the customer convenience point of view so yeah absolutely something um we all <laughs> we all can learn from from amazon um so my the, the next question I have is um, about uh, business decisions and how omnichannel systems have help uh, shape future business decisions to help alter retail strategies. Um, can you think of any any specific uh, ways of doing so? And then uh, what have you seen in uh, at Macy's or JCPenney or in your current position? Yeah, so for me, the biggest way systems can help um, or alter strategies is really through that data, um, having clean data, a data strategy, and then the machine learning and AI capability um, with that data. So really understanding the customer's behavior, what they're looking for, where they're lingering, whether it's in the store or online, what they're purchasing, not just colors and sizes and styles, um, but the combination of products that they're purchasing and, and then what they're not purchasing. What are they abandoning in their carts? What are they searching for and browsing and spending um, time looking at and then not completing the sale? And analyzing that information can really help inform business strategies. So 
um, there's, you know, myths that can, can be held uh, within the organization that can be debunked with the right data. Um, and I, I do think the data can also then help you understand how you want to place your product in your stores, where you want to place the product in the stores. Um, for example, when you understand what product is being bought in combination together, it can change your merchandising strategies. Uh, it can change the, the product strategies of what colors you carry, what sizes you carry. Um, so I, I do think the data and, and the systems and the machine learning of that data can really help inform strategies. Um, I remember from uh, my previous experiences at, uh, at large retailers, um, at least in the early days, maybe it's it it has improved in the in the recent years, that there was always a friction between uh, let's call them online guys and in store guys, and the friction uh, came from. Well, if I if I implement the omni channel strategies and I am responsible for store sales, um, you basically cannibalizing my my revenues and my sales. Yeah. What have you seen as a resolution to this? How did people actually uh, resolve this? Because I'm seeing uh, even with Macy's and uh, um, and others that there's definitely a lot more inclusiveness, if you will. Right? There is a lot more. Uh, omni-channel um, experiences, so to speak, that uh, that are uh, popping up there. So there must be some organizational changes that have happened in those retailers. Yeah. Th so to go back to your earlier question about what are some of the biggest challenges or roadblocks um, when building out those complex systems, and I would say the biggest challenge is organizational structure and the financial um, operations. And if you're not willing to really rethink the organization and how the business is measured and the KPIs used to measure, um, it can create significant roadblocks to um, actually delivering on that strategy. So P&Ls are critical for managing expense, labor, shipping, um, but having a separate P&L for your online business from your stores really starts to push the boundaries of when you get the sale, who gets the credit for the sale? Who gets the sale for your purposes of bonus calculation? What's your inventory turn measurement? If you're starting to measure turn, looking at inventory that was not actually used to fulfill the sale um, because you generated the sale in store but filled it online or vice versa. Um, and then the returns processing and who gets credit or um, not for the return um, is also another big factor. So my experience has shown um, that having a definitive strategy and approach uh, to ensure that the right incentives are provided and the right behavior um, comes out of this for the customer uh, and not necessarily the business, um, it, it's going to make or break a strategy and the success of an implementation. That's great. Um, going back to a um, question about data. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned earlier that product onboarding um, is, is very important and critical in providing a rich data for um, uh, even monitoring customer behavior, um, much less, you know, of, co of course, for um, getting product displayed correctly to the customer, but also we need that for monitoring and personalizing customer experiences. So what are the, uh, what have you seen as good tactics um, of, um, good tactics in, in, in reaching uh, product data and, and getting um, that complete and consistent data across your suppliers and presenting it to the customer in a form that is um, that is good enough for a customer to make an informed decision about the product. Yeah, I think first and foremost, there has to be a single merchant voice with the vendor and that merchant voice has to be all inclusive um, of the customer and your digital strategy. So in order to make sure that the sales associate has an image of the product and has the copy of the product and the features and benefits of a product, when a merchant is going to market, they need to request of the vendor, the partner in providing 
um, that information. And if the vendor isn't going to be providing it and um, you're, you're all private label and developing it yourself, then you have to have and ensure that the merchants are providing that content on 100% of the product regardless of where it's being placed. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you can ensure that when the customer is moving into a digital storefront, when they're in store looking at a digital display and searching for product or whether online or on their mobile device, if the product is only carried in the store, you still want to be able to represent that product to the customer on that device. And I, I do think, again, that goes back to um, organization. Are you organizationally structured with two separate teams? Your um, merchants for brick and mortar separate from your merchants for e-com. If you're a single okay. merchant, do you have the workflow enabled to ensure all of that information is provided up front? Many retailers still have maybe the merchants purchasing the product, but then a separate site merchandising team for the product that's enabled online and in, in getting the images and the features and benefits. And with that separated workflow, um, it, it still, again, provides challenges from a data perspective. And how do you ensure that the, the data that comes in from uh, numerous suppliers is actually consistent across all of the suppliers? Or is it something that's handled within the retailer? Um, well, again, I think that this is where it comes down to every retailer has its own hierarchy. They have their own definition of attributes. So um, if you're not getting that from the vendors and partnering in your nomenclature, this to me is where, again, data and machine learning and AI can really assist in terms of using the um, information to help auto assign and reduce the workload for a merchant to be able to auto assign the classification or the attribution. Um, that's that's very interesting because that's exactly where we're uh, trying to help retailers. I'm curious, what have you seen in terms of um, savings? Um, I don't know if you can quote any any, any dollar amounts, but um, uh, maybe savings in, in labor, in hours um, that site merchants are spending on onboarding products like how much can ai and machine learning sp can speed up that process i think the technology is to a point where it can um, increase the process 10 if not 20 fold mm -hmm. and so really um, helping with a degree of certainty ensure that the data that is provided um, with the product images or with the product um, master itself and leaving it to a review portion for the merchant to correct anything and review, again, depending on the process and how you're able to, to do it. And of course, some businesses are, are a little bit more challenging than others. Um, but I think you can see anywhere from a three to, to a 10 or, or 20 fold reduction in um, work effort. That's great. So that means that there is definitely a lot of... Um uh efficiencies that ai and machine learning can actually bring to a re retailer which will not only um result in savings on labor but also since you're able to onboard the product onto your uh, online store much faster you can put it in front of the customer much faster so that the revenue potentially can increase as well absolutely and it goes back to then also being able to digitize your entire product catalog, um, which not every retailer does today. Um, one more thing that I kind of wanted to talk to you about. I remember at uh, Macy's, you did something very innovative with machine learning for, um, uh, for buyers. Can you little, talk a little bit about that? Um, sure, yeah. When the um, product uh, is being received, from a market perspective with a line sheet, um, using the combination of the line sheet and an image at market to run it through the machine learning and auto assign product attributes to know whether it's a short sleeve top or a long sleeve top, a V-neck versus a cowl neck versus a turtleneck, um, the color, um, there's a whole host of attributes that would normally have been the work of the buyer or the vendor um, that then could all be automated by using machine learning. 
Uh, that's very interesting because uh, that is one of the use cases that I personally would not have even thought of um, as something that is absolutely needed because to most of us, um, those processes are almost not visible to, to most of us as customers, right? Yeah, so I think that... most people think of it from just, again, when I'm a site merchant and getting the product ready to go live on site, how do I assign the attribution once I have the formal photograph coming out of um, cop, you know, the, the photography process or the retouch process. Um, when you wait to that tail end of the process, again, depending on um, the ability to actually get every product photographed, et cetera, but knowing it earlier in the life cycle, the product attribution is critical to optimizing your assortments for your customers. So again, you have, um, back to that omni-channel strategy, the right product in the right place. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to the omni-channel strategy, um, do you believe that this concept, this omni-channel strategy concept, is going to be around for a while? Or are we moving to something uh, a little bit different? Um, what are some retail trends maybe you're seeing brands adopting in the near future? Yeah, so I mean, I do think Omnichannel is going to be around um, for quite a while. And I think what we're starting to see and will continue to see is more blurring between digital and store. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, virtual reality in store to help somebody, um, whether it be with furniture or personal design of product and bringing the technology um, to help me design the sweater that I want to have in the color I want with the design I want. Um, voice commerce, while I think it's um, still several years away, um, the new generations are being raised on technology and with Alexa in the home and every home um, as it's increasing and increasing year over year, I think that voice commerce is going to become something we're going to see um, increasing over the next three to 10 years. Yeah, that's um, actually very interesting. I'm, uh, I've even seen demos of uh a little rob robot in the store, I don't remember which store it was, helping with um, returns. Yeah. When the customer can actually approach the robot in the store and uh, uh, scan a receipt and talk to it. And um, so, yeah, definitely it's uh, it, it has a lot of promise. Um, so there is uh, some research on CMO Council about marketers feeling like they lack the necessary talent technology and processes to master omnichannel and brand marketing. Do you think this is true? Um, I think it's true, particularly from a talent perspective. If you think about my earlier comments where you've got your traditional brick and mortar um, that would have traditional marketing for direct mail, TV, radio, or print, um, and growing that uh, as a separate business and channel to your digital um, online business. I, I, what I haven't seen is a lot of marketing talent that has had exposure to digital and um, print natively and understanding how to plan, how to execute, and, and again, how to measure. Um, and I think increasingly with the number of vehicles growing between SMS, push, email, social, um, traditional print, the attribution of that sale and understanding the return on ad spend and the number of impressions served to a customer that actually drives them to purchase um, gets increasingly complex. I, I do think there are technologies um, out there that can aid marketing, um, but again, some of them can be more difficult to implement if your customer data isn't clean and isn't centralized um, and adequately merged together. So understanding your online customer and issue the same as the customer shopping in store with a different credit card. Yeah. If, um, if a brand or um, a retailer were to experiment with Omnichannel for the very first time, what are some lessons that um, you would have for them? Yeah, I do think having a very clear vision and roadmap uh, of what you want to build and how you want to build it to, to deliver on that strategy and the flexibility and agility that's needed for the customer. Um, you really have to lay out that vision and the data and understand how to architect it in a way um, that is going to be agile and flexible, again, to meet the growing um, needs or desires of that customer. 
Um, so actionable lessons has been focusing on a current feature function or capability and not necessarily, again, tying it back to the bigger vision. Uh, things can get developed from a technology perspective in a way that is prohibiting or limiting a future change to that strategy and it takes it longer um, to deliver to the customer and speed is critical in today's market. Well, Eileen, thank you very much for those insightful lessons and for being part of the VIEW podcast. Well, thank you for having me. It's been great. Thank you, Julia. As we continue to look at ever-changing retail landscape, there is so much to talk about. There is AI, virtual models, individualized shopping experiences, and the ability to individualize those experiences at scale. Join us on our next episode of The View Podcast. Until then, goodbye.